Hi viewers, welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Barista Andrea. Like I promised you that in this week's video, we are going to look at calibration practically. But based on the last week's video, I came to realize that I have to deal with three kinds of baristas. The first barista is that barista who has never calibrated in his or her entire life, but they have it in theory or they have it in mind. They would wish to become baristas. The second barista is that barista who has a semi-automated machine. What do I mean by semi-automated machine? We shall see that in the future of the video. And the third barista is that barista who has a hybrid machine, but it really disturbs them to do it, to calibrate their coffee, to serve a perfect espresso throughout the day. So, so with like the this, help of Barista Ariel here, you? we are going to show you the different ways on how we calibrate. So without wasting any minute, I'm uh, going to hand over Barista Ariel to you so that he shows you the process of how you can easily use a hybrid machine while calibrating your coffee. But don't forget that we not only calibrate the machines, the coffee, but we as baristas get to calibrate our minds to so stay on the right track of the standard measurements of our espressos. Witnessing what Barista Ariel does immediately, he arrives at his shift. He first checks the water supply to the machine, like you are saying, to confirm that the water is enough, ready to supply his machine. Then he gets to switch on his machine. All this is part of organizing yourself, organizing your mind and everything. So he's switching on his grinder, like we see. Remember, every barrister, the first thing you have to do is to organize yourself. Immediately you arrive at the shift when you're going to calibrate. Depending on the kind of espresso machine that you have, it takes between 20 to 30 minutes to gain back its energy. So our machine is ready. Then we are going to get started with his calibration. So, like we see this, he's trying to remove the chemicals and the water that is pulled off throughout the night. So, what is next with Barista Real? Like we see, he switches on his weighing scale. Remember, every barista has to have these following things. You have to have the tamper, distributor, grinder, weighing scale, and the espresso machine. If you don't have a weighing scale to help you time, always use your phone. So, he's going to, his cleaning is basket. All right, so basically when he switches on his grinder, he gets, make sure that he sets his grinder to what he normally uses. So he's setting the seconds to what he uses. Then he gets to doze off his coffee through the grind. Okay, then he says he's going to dispose of the first dose of coffee grounds. Throughout the night, the grinder gets to experience different weather conditions. So. We can't easily use the startup coffee. We have to dispose it off. He places the water filter on the weighing scale. He tells the grams of the water filter then. He's grinding his second dose. The first dose will dispose it off. So that is the second dose. It shows us that it is weighing 15 grams. After he holds his distributor, like we see every barista has a different way of handling their water filter. After distributing off the coffee, you see how he's stamping. He pounds the coffee to compress it so that it is evenly distributed within the basket. Then after he cleans off the beds of the potter filter, flushes out the water, then he gets to insert. That is his first espresso, like you see. He gets his cup, the espresso cup, towels off the minutes and towels off the weight of the cup, then he starts his extraction. So like we see, it's already started off the seconds and it is showing us the yield or the outcome of the 15 grams right here. So the yield of the 15 grams is basically 33, like you've seen. Okay, so with his first espresso, like we see, he's going to test it. Okay, so basically it tells us that he's going to make adjustments throughout his grinder based on the test that he has had for the espresso. Remember, right now he's using the automatic machine whereby everything is automatically set. Okay. Right. 
8. Alright, so right now he's trying to extract his second espresso. Placing on the tamping of barista real, we are experiencing a channeling in our espresso. We shall see what he does next. Perfect. So that's the yield. This is the perfect espresso. So viewers, welcome back from that session of Barista Real displaying his way of calibration practically. And I dedicate that part mostly to those baristas who use hybrid machines whereby you can easily fully set your machine to basically monitor your espresso flows. So remember, we are different baristas. Baris, every barista has different steps through which we get to calibrate. So right now, I'm going to talk about those baristas who basically have semi-automated machines or those baristas who are just entering into the system of being a barista. But just in case, still you have a hybrid machine, that doesn't stop you from getting a pen and book to note down the following. So let's get started. As a barista, like you saw Barista Real, he reached his station, checked on the water supply or the water source of his machine, switched on the machine. Then after 20 to 30 minutes, he came to monitor the two gauges of the water and the steam to see whether his machine is ready to fully service throughout the day and the grinders. That's what I'm going to do. Organization is rule number one. Make sure that everything is set that you're going to serve throughout your day. After knowing that everything is set throughout the day, then I am going to start my calibration. Step number one, I am going to get my potter filter right here, like you see it. And the first step that I'm going to do to confirm how many grams that sit into this potter filter basket, I am going to remove this basket to confirm how many grams this basket can carry. It can only carry 14 grams. Most of the barista have a tendency to just get to their machines and they don't know how, how many grams their baskets can carry, which is really going to cause complications while extracting. You're going to see water outflow just in case you put beyond 14 grams of beyond 14 grams of coffee so while calibrating i have to make sure that the coffee that i'm calibrating has to be 14 or less than 14 grams of coffee then like you saw ariel using this machine this screen was lighting up like you see but i am not going to use the screen this time for the compatibility of all baristas watching this video this switch has an anti-clockwise rule whereby if I get to grind, I can automatically anti-clockwise the machine. Then it gives me the coffee that I need. But still, I am not going to use this coffee. I am going to still dispose of my first dosage of the coffee. Because I really can't consume or utilize this coffee based on the weather changes that affected my grinder. So after disposing of the first dosage, what am I going to do next? After exposing of our first dosage, I'll place my potter filter on the weighing scale towel that off. The first weight is for the potter filter. Now we are looking for the weight of the coffee. Then I'm going to grind my second dosage. But remember, I have to make sure that the coffee that fits into this potter filter must be 14 and below. So I'll first, so I'll first grind 14 grams of coffee. I am not going to use the screen like I told you. 
So with that, our first way, it is 13. Then I'll get a small cup here, have a little bit of it, then increase it to 14. Like, so after increasing it to 14, make sure that every barista watching this video, if you don't have a weighing scale to help you out, tell your boss to buy you a weighing scale of this kind that has a grammage and yeah. a seconds unit. But just in case you have a kitchen out there and you can really use the kitchen, which has only the kilograms, then you have to utilize your phone. Remember, every phone has a timer. So you can use the weighing scale for the cages and, and your phone for the timing. So after confirming that, our coffee is 14 grams. I will get my coffee here, distribute it evenly, just in case I don't have a distributor, because I believe most of the baristas watching this video don't have distributors. So I will, I will tamp it evenly so that it sits in the basket evenly, then get hold of my tamper like this is how I hold my tamper. The first, uh, the, the two fingers will hold it, then I will round it with the rest of the fingers, bring up these two fingers too. Make sure that they get to ta they they get to knock on the tamper and the and the rim of the potter filter, like you see. I will make sure that my arm, like you saw, barista Ariel's arm, is ninety degrees. Stand firmly, then exert the pounds that I need. Ring it off. Then, and then I clean off the rim of the what of the potter filter. So what is next? I am going to come here, like you saw, barista Ariel. We are not going to use the automatic way. We are going to use the barista, barista button. Remember, every machine out there, as long as it's a double group head, it has six buttons. Three are disposed to one group head and the three are disposed to the other group head. But we have the barista button, single cup and double cup espresso. So I am going to use the barista button because in my country, most of the baristas use this because it gives me the momentum to count my seconds throughout the head whereby I can easily follow up how many seconds I have extracted my espresso. But for now, I am going to deploy my weighing scale, like you see here. So remember, first flush out the first water, clean out, deploy your weighing scale. So I'll get my espresso cup that I'm going to use, place it on the weighing scale, towel that off. This is 14 grams. And the first thing I am going to look at with the second dosage of the grains is I am going to monitor basically three things. I first monitor the flow of the espresso from the beginning to the end. Then the second thing, the seconds through which the espresso is extracted. Remember, a double espresso or a single espresso is supposed to extract between 20 to 30 seconds. After looking at that, still I am going to look at the flow of my espresso within the first four to five seconds. And the yield of 14 grams has to be 28 seconds. But basically sometimes it's increased by two grammages, but it's supposed to be 28 seconds. That is a ratio of one to two. Every one gram of the coffee grounds gets to consume two mils of water out of the espresso machine. So I am going to begin extracting. I will insert. Immediately I insert, I have to press the barista button and the timer. One, two, right. So at five seconds, our espresso has started coming out. But that was a channeling, so I have to repeat the tapping process to reduce on the what? On the weight. So immediately it reaches 28, I have to stop. So like you see, I have stopped the timing and I have stopped the extraction process. And our yield is 29, which isn't bad. So with the yield of 29 seconds, we've extracted it at 28 seconds, which is not bad from 20 to 30 seconds. So we are going to extract another espresso. The first espresso, I don't test it. So we are going to start testing with the second espresso. After monitoring our first shot of espresso that we got to extract, we are going to extract the second shot of espresso. I'll come back, place my potter filter onto the wing scale, towel that off, remove the timing. After telling that off, I am going to make sure that I put 14 grams of coffee again. Okay. Because basing on our first espresso, it showed that everything was perfect with the flow. So 15, I'll reduce by one grammage, which is 14 grams now. So remember, tamping easily affects our coffee due to the much pounds that I go to exert. So after that, I am going to tamp our coffee. But this time, I'll reduce on the pounds. Okay. 
give it a rest. All right, so I'm going to deploy again our scale. Tow that off. First purge, then. So remember this second espresso, that is the espresso that we are going to testing before we adjust anything on our grinder. So I'll deploy my cup here, the espresso cup, and repeat the same process. So this time our espresso has come out at four seconds and we can easily go with that. Immediately it reaches 28, I have to stop. But right now still we are experiencing an under extraction whereby it has given us the perfect yield but the seconds are really less. That means we are going to increase on the pounds of tamping again. I may it have I may have reduced much pounds from the tamping section. So I am going to repeat another one. I won't test this course. I already know the result of what I'm going to take. So still we repeat the process again. Fifteen. Anything beyond fifteen, it is a go. All right, so fourteen, repeat the process, distribute. Tamp, but this time I have increased slightly on the pounds of the what? Of the tamping. Deploy, purge, clean. All right, get our espresso cup. Right, place it, towel. At four seconds, it starts coming. Like you see the flow, this time is perfect. That means the tamping is just enough and perfect. So until it reaches 28, the yield, I'll have to stop our grinder to start testing. So, so like you see, our espresso has been extracted within 22 seconds at, at a yield of 31, which is not bad. So I'm going to begin by testing this third espresso because the tamping was okay, the flow was okay, the yield was okay, and the seconds were okay. So I'll first swirl. Taking the first sip. The second sip. And the third sip. Sometimes, depending on the quality or the kind of coffee that you have, you might find that once you test your coffee three times or two times, you are going to get the elements or the flavors or the different things that you're looking out of that coffee. So right now, after testing my coffee, the first sip helped me to determine the bitterness or the sweetness of the coffee. The second sip helped me to determine acidity of the coffee. The third sip helped me to determine the after test of the coffee but all that, those results my coffee wasn't perfect so right now basing on the elements that i got out of uh, my coffee it's kind of bitter it has too much acidity and the test there is no balance within the what within the espresso so i am going to deploy in my fourth espresso to see whether i'll get what i want so right now basing on those elements i have two options i'm going to slightly reduce on the grammage of my coffee which might be 13.7 grams or I can easily take my grinder to the coarse side to reduce on the bitterness and the acidity get a perfect balance within my espresso but I am going to deploy both I am going to reduce on the grammage but still adjust my grinder to the coarse side to get what I'm looking for okay. You say 13 point? So basically that is an estimate of 13.7 grams. So we're going to see before I switch my grinder to the cost side. I just want to reduce on the grammage then we see the results that come out. Wow, this is really a long process. Okay.
All right, so through the yields that we've seen, through everything that we've seen, I am going to test this espresso. And I believe that throughout my adjustments of the grinder, I am going to get something that is perfect. All right, I believe that this is the best espresso to serve throughout my shift. I will adjust my grinder later in the afternoon or the evening, but for the morning shift, this is a very perfect espresso ready to serve. Once we get to talk about calibration in practice and theory, and we get to say out every word, we might find ourselves spending the whole day talking about calibration. So with all those simple basics and those simple steps that you've seen, hope you've got to like something, learn something. Just in case you have any other questions, simply drop them, comment section below, or your Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter pages, which are at Barista Andrea. See you next time.